by definition, art is impractical, and I'm committed to making art. Not all of what I do has to be practical. For me, I've studied textiles and fiber history, and I always knew it as tied to domesticity, and I think that's one, one of the reasons that I found it as such a potent medium, because it's tied to this feminist history. And there was a moment in the 70s, or probably early 60s, when there were women artists who were taking it on, like this is something I know, and then propelling it out of that domestic sphere into the art context. So that history I just adore. So when I look at this history of um, instructional material that are in these periodicals that were sent to home weavers around the country, you know, here's this great pattern for you to make curtains for your house. What a noble thing, how great, dissemination of information. It's a mathematical draft for a pattern. Like, there's a lot of intellectual knowledge and understanding and labor that is going into making that cloth. That said, I have no patience for it. You know, part of this Impractical Weaving Suggestions title is just that, you know, I have so, so much reverence for the women that came before me and so much um, respect for what went into that, um, that level of making, and yet, I, you know, am not tied to that, that need to produce on that scale and I'm so happy that I get to use all of those things for this other invention. And so for me it was nice to kind of pull back and like research just the, the structures of weaving and find ways to, for me to explore them that felt fresh and new and vibrant, um, you know. And some of it is creating a textile, but some of it's like looking at the structures of textiles and, and really wanting to understand them as like optical illusions or intersections of line. And so getting back to um, just the essence of what those intersections mean was really fun for me. You know, I can look at these mathematical structures that are embedded into the cloth itself or these different patterns that are very sophisticated. and. You know, not only that, all the, the labor that goes into producing it, the understanding of like how much materials you need and the cost associated with that, you know, those are things built into these patterns that are handed down, you know, from woman to woman and through these periodicals that I was looking to. But then, you know, I look to a lot of artists who were working in and around these times but in such a different um, format. You know, Solowitz making, you know, wall drawings based on mathematical structures. And, you know, Buckminster Fuller is making, um, you know, architectural shapes based on tensegrity, the relationship of compression and tension. And I'm thinking a lot about the, the three-dimensional um, tensile forms that Buckminster Fuller is, you know, understanding and, and trying to really um, think about textiles as being really integral to, to creating some of those tensile structures. And, really having fun with the 2D, 3D relationship. So um, I love all of that that's built into our understanding of textiles as a material, as, as meaningful. And for me, it's again, pushing it forward. What can it mean into the future? How can I take on all those meanings and say something new with it? And so, um, you know, I'm a certified textile nerd and I think I will forever, you know, use it as a place to make art.